Hi, this is Peter from Cars and Guitars with a special request video. Tires 101. Now before I explain what the numbers mean and what to look for and what kind of defects you can find on tires before you buy them, I'm going to show you a couple pictures of some tire building machines and I'm going to show you a short video of myself building a tire. I'm building a first stage carcass of a motorcycle tire, but the processes are pretty much the same for motorcycle tires and car tires, truck tires, pretty much the same. So, let's get on with that part. I'm holding a bead, waiting for the machine to open up. I put a bead on for the left side. That's the left side bead of the tire. I pull off the carcass from the tire I just built. That's the previous built carcass. As I come back to the machine, I'll have another bead. I'll grab the bead off the cart. That's the right side bead. In order to make the bead stick to the tire better, I rub some heptane on the rubber. Heptane melts it a little bit and helps it stick once the three beads are pressed onto the carcass. Hit the foot pedal, you can see the drum expands and the machine closes. The first part to go on is the inner liner. That sticks, it gets rolled around. Hand trim the inner liner with about a quarter inch overlap. Make sure it's lined up. Both, both halves have to be lined up, has to be a good seam. Hit the foot pedal, you can see the bottom roller comes up to compress the plies as they go together. Now I'm putting down the first ply. Drum rolls around 360, cut the fly with a hot knife, make sure it's nice, hit the foot pedal, it rotates 90 degrees, this is the second ply, put the second ply down, hit the foot pedal, rotates another 180 to 360 degrees for this ply, trim, cut with maybe an eighth inch to maybe 3 sixteenths overlap on the ply, Make sure it's lined up. Hit the foot pedal. And now I'm going to back up the drum and I'm going to take a hot knife and I'm going to hand press the seam for the inner liner to make sure no air escapes when it's finished. Hit the button, the fingers, grab the tire, come together, press the beads onto the carcass. Now the beads are on and the machine puffs a little bit. Now it's going to roll. From the back, there's a roller pressing all those layers together. This is all raw rubber, so it pushes together to make it stick. The bladders puff out and it closes to roll the rubber over the bead. Now the bead is encased on the carcass and we get back to the beginning putting the bead on for the next step. Okay, before I talk about tire defects, things you might hear from mechanics and tire stores and the tire curing process, let's talk about tire construction. Now all tires have the same basic components. They'll have beads, two beads, a sidewall, inner liner, ply, cord that can either be a polyester, Kevlar, or a steel cord, and they have tread. But let's talk about the beads first. A bead is made out of wire. It's about an 062 wire. That wire comes and passes, is passed through a die, and molten rubber is poured into the die, and actually is forced in through an extruder. So the wire comes out covered with rubber. Then it goes, the wire goes through a series of cooling mandrels, and then it comes and it's, wet, it's wrapped here on a mandrel, maybe six to ten times depending on the tire. And if I were to cut this bead right here and looked at the cross section, there's different bead structures for different applications, okay? There's a rectangular bead, because the beads will be, the wire will be stacked like that. There's a square bead. It can be just like that. A real strong application for high performance tires will have a hex bead where it's wrapped like this. And if you looked at it, it'd be sort of wrapped in that fashion. That's a lot stronger. But depending on the application, you'll have a different winding and a different shape of the bead. Now, I also mentioned something about an apex. And an apex is something that's put on, if you were again to look at the bead, and here's a cross section, here's all the wires of the bead. And if we look at it this way, an apex is just another piece of rubber that is shaped like this, goes like that. And this is a piece of rubber that's on the bead. So if you were to look at the bead, the apex would be here, as you saw in the one picture of the beads next to the tire building machine. This apex just allows this bead to stick to the sidewall better. The sidewall will come in here and the bead sticks better and it allows it to adhere better to the bead itself. Now we can talk about sidewall. The sidewall is nothing but a piece of rubber. Roughly about, uh, depending on how it comes out of the extruder, might only be a couple inches. Two inches from side to side. And the purpose of the sidewall 
when you look at a tire, here's your rim. The sidewall of a tire is what gives it the height, okay? The higher the sidewall, the softer the ride, but also the more flexible the tire. So if you're looking at the tire, and, and here, if you're looking at the side view, and here's your tread that's going this way, if your sidewall is tall here, and you put a force this way when you're turning, the sidewall will bend. So, if you're looking at this, and you look again, and we take it and we look, if we look at a real big rim with a real small sidewall tire on it, let's put some spokes in here just to make it so you know it's a rim, just like that. Real short sidewall, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really stiff, it's going to corner real tight, and it's going to be a very, very rigid riding tire. Now I'll talk about innerliner. The innerliner is the starting point for all tires. You saw when I was building the tire on the building machine, the first thing you put down there is the innerliner. The innerliner is a piece of rubber that's very, very soft, and this is what protects, this would be the inside of the tire, so the air is not going to get through this layer. Then there, on top of that, is extruded another piece of rubber, and this is an adhesion layer. This is where the uh, allows the inner liner to stick the ply. On the outside of this there will be some chafing, it's called chafing, and that's nothing but a uh, Kevlar ply that goes on the edge, and this is what gets wrapped around the bead. The bead is right here on each side, so this will get wrapped around just like that. Okay, now we have the inner liner has the inner part which prevents the air from going through and the and the um, adhesion layer. On top of that goes the ply, which is the cord. Now, the ply is going to be one layer, and if you were to look at the ply, if you were to look at the lines and how the, the cord goes through the ply, it usually goes on an angle, like this. It can be a, sometimes the ply can have a real steep angle, sometimes it can be straight across, depending on how the tire is designed. But the ply is what gives it strength. And again, it can be steel or polyester. So, you have the ply. And when, when you saw me put down two plies or three plies, when they say a two-ply tire or a three-ply tire, the first ply will go around the tire and the ply will go in this direction. Then the second ply will be a little bit narrower and, it'll, and the ply will go in this direction. And then the third ply, if that was put on there, would go like this and it would go back in this direction. So you can see how the strength builds up as you get towards the center of the tire. That's what ply and cord is all about right there. Now it can either be steel or polyester, but the ply is what makes it strong. Now this brings us to the last part of the tire, the tread. The tread is a very thick piece of rubber. When it comes out of an extruder, and it's shaped like that, it can be anywhere from, believe it or not, the tread on a NASCAR tire or a drag tire is only 50 thousandths thick. Very, very thin tread. Regular car, car tire, the tread might be a half inch thick. On an over-the-road truck tire, this tread could be up to an inch thick. Okay, so, the tread is cut on an angle, and it's cut, up, cut with a shape. There's different shapes, different angles for different kinds of tires, different, depending on the design again. But, the rubber will be a little different on the outside, than it is in the middle. The middle is very, very soft. Now, when this goes into the mold, it goes in its flat, and as it's, as it's pressed, the, the tire gets pressed from the inside, and I'll show you during the curing phase, this gets pressed into the mold, and when it gets pressed into the mold, that's what creates your tread. Like that. So, so contrary to popular belief, a tire is not made by injecting hot rubber into a mold. It's built in layers, it's, pushed in, it's, it's sat in the mold, and the tire is pushed, the rubber is pushed into a mold. You'd have a mold out here with the cutouts in here, or the shape of the, the tread and all the sidewall, and it gets pushed into it as it's heated up. I'll talk about that during the curing phase.